Hey friends, how's it going? I am back with another video. Uh, today I want to talk about the ratio spread. I've been trading these for eh, like a month and a half or so. I've traded them before as well. Um, and this has actually replaced a proprietary trade that I was trading that I learned from a course. I've never been able to share that one for obvious reasons, but this is a vanilla trade, well known, uh, so I can share it quite freely. And it's an undefined risk trade. So undefined risk, Trades work well if you have portfolio margin or if you're trading futures options and you have access to span margin. Portfolio margin, you need like $125,000 plus account and you have to get approval from your broker. Um, span margin, you need futures options trading approval, which you also have to ask your broker. But I don't know that there's a set uh, account size requirement. You can certainly trade it in a smaller account. But still, you want to have a decent size account for the trades that we'll be talking about. But uh, anyway, if you are new to the channel, my name is Oliver. I travel full time and I trade uh, for a living. I do other stuff on the side, but the trading has been paying for my traveling uh, so far. So good. I mostly trade options because it's a sort of a long term, slow style of trade. You can just check like 15 minutes a day or so. You don't even have to look every day. Um, so I'm not staying up until four in the morning, pounding espresso, trying to stay awake, staring at charts or the, the level twos or anything crazy like that. Um, so that's why options, options selling, options income trading is what it's called. Uh, if you are new to the channel, you probably want to watch some of my older videos first. I'm, I'm going to assume that you've seen those. Um, and I'm just sharing like my trading journey. I'm not a financial advisor. So if you're interested in trading and you're putting together a trading plan, you should probably talk to one. Uh, and also, you know, my plan is not necessarily appropriate for you. I don't know your account size, your risk tolerance, anything like that. So with that, let's just talk about uh, ratio spread. So these can be done on the put side or the call side. And most traders do these directional. I'm just going to talk about the put side today, but you can just, you know, flip it around in your head. I like to do these on equity indexes, so the S&P, for example, and the put side premiums are higher. That pushes your trade further away. I like to go low delta. That pushes your trade further away as well. And I like to go longer days to expiration, which again, pushes the structure and the risk away from the market. Your margin in span or um, portfolio margin, as we discussed before, is based on some percent down move. So the further away you can push this risk, the lower the margin requirement becomes. But as an undefined risk trade, it's always worth keeping in mind that margin can expand if you get a move against you closer to the risk, uh, then that margin will go up and you, you, know, you need to have cash in your account to handle that or wire in cash or you know, close the trade down. So um, just be aware it's not like iron condors or something where you can throw it on and completely forget about it. Uh, you need to be disciplined and have a have an exit plan, a loss plan, and, and follow it. But uh, with a ratio, you're going to sell some number of puts uh, far out of the money. I'm using five delta. And then you're going to buy a smaller number of puts. So I'm selling three five deltas. And I'm using delta to pick all of the strikes. And I'm picking the eight delta strike as the long. And this is going to end up going on for a net credit. Uh, it's going to have positive delta. So you know, on a move up and the trade makes money. If you haven't seen this kind of graph before, this is my analyzed plot in thinkorswim. Uh, I actually have other accounts here, but I'm just using them for the analyzed graph. And this light blue line, so this bottom axis is the S&P index, which you'll see, you know, they'll quote on CNBC or whatever. And right now it's around 5,600. Um, but this is, you know, if it goes down or up, right? And then this, y-axis is the P&L for this particular trade. So you can see this trade makes uh, at expiration, which is October 24th, about 127 days from now. Uh, you can see in this corner here, this trade makes about $2,500. If, if we land anywhere in here at expiration, doesn't matter where, there's kind of this lottery zone where we would make a big profit if it, if it landed down in here. Um, and then we've got our risk out the backside of the trade if we have a really huge drop in the S&P. Uh, now, I don't hold these to expiration. This purple line is called the T plus zero line. So this is the model's prediction of your P&L if the market were to move today, right? So T plus zero days versus you could think of this blue line as T plus 127 days, right? 
Um, but the purple line is based on a model and you know, reality can be different based on various factors. Still, you can see like on a move up, the purple line is sloping up. So on a move up, the purple line is making money and on a move down, it's losing money. So we call it a, a positive delta, a bullish trade if you like. And many of you know I like to trade delta neutral. We'll talk about that uh, later. So, so that's the ratio spread. You might, uh, if you're familiar with options trading, you might look at this and be like, hey, like this looks overly complicated. Why are we spreading? Why are we putting on this extra put that we have to pay for? Um, you know, why not just, if we're going to go undefined risk, just sell the puts. Why not just keep it super simple? And that's totally fair. So while I do this as a one by three personally, I've sized this up double size, two by six, uh, so that the marginal requirement is 16,000. So I can have a comparable short put position. Here I'm selling three puts again, the five delta, and it's using a similar amount of buying power reduction, right? You can see the theta here is 46 versus 53, but you know the buying power is slightly higher. So arguably these two trades are pretty interchangeable and I've got seven delta uh, versus seven. It, if you're wondering why like selling three five deltas to seven delta, it's actually a 50 multiplier for the S&P futures. I always talk in terms of 100 multipliers, but um, and when you're looking for the strike, that's what you're looking for. But uh, yeah, it's a 50 multiplier just to keep in mind. Um, so what's the point? Well, this really large tent back here is going to put uh, extra strong pull on the T plus zero line here as time passes. So it's going to give a lot of lift to this line and pull that, uh, that risk up towards the mountain peak. And it's going to pull this purple line over here up even potentially above the blue line before it finally settles down onto the blue line at expiration. So it's kind of like, uh, gives the trade like a bit of gas. It's kind of hard to really explain well, but that's basically the reason. That's the reason I prefer the ratio spreads. Now what we can do is, um, so we can compare these two. So if I switch to a single line, so this is the, the T plus zero line. Um, ignore the gray one for now, right? But if I zoom in, you can see, uh, you know, here's the market. Certainly they are, they are very similar, right? Almost interchangeable, especially because obviously I can't get them like, you know, perfectly matched, um, but very similar. And that is fine. Um, so the light blue is the, is the ratio. But if we move ahead, two months, let's say, so 60 days out, they're very close together here, right? They're both making roughly the same amount, which is 2,300. But down here, the ratio is doing much better. So I've got this 10% down move line. So the ratio is only losing $400, but the short put would be down $2,500 on a 10% down move. So that's, that's why I like the ratio <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, it, it is more contracts. It is more complicated. You'll probably have more slippage issues and you'll certainly pay more commission. Um, you know, but for me, the ratio spreads the better trade. Now I did say that, you know, typically traders put these on bullish, something vaguely like this with a bit of profit in the upper expiration line on the runaway move, you know, you just make your money faster. Um, but it does look kind of like, uh, a broken wing butterfly. And you might be thinking like, Hey, broken wing butterflies are great. Uh, I, I like Delta neutral trading. Can't we just do this as Delta neutral trade? Um, now I'm now managing my Delta on a portfolio basis. So I'll share that later. Um, and so I'm fine with a positive Delta. I would note that the positive Delta is relatively low. And the other thing is that over time, right? If I look at two week bands and we zoom in, Positive delta is the slope of these colored lines. And so over time, as it makes money, the slope also slowly decreases. So this is the worst delta is going to be. And as you sit in the trade, it just naturally loses delta until you end up pulling it off. So it's just worth noting that. But you can do these delta neutral if you want. And, and it is like a broken butterfly. Uh, so here I'm still doing a three by one here, but I've sold 
three five delta puts just like before but instead of buying the eight delta i bought the 15 delta put to hedge the delta off completely and yet i still have very healthy theta the buying power effect is very similar right the theta is actually higher but what's going to happen and the delta is basically zero right and look at our gamma i mean it's it's positive or zero uh, there is no gamma in this trade and that's great right gamma is terrible um, so this looks really good. We're trading even more contracts here uh, to have this position on though. And what's going to happen over time, if we go back to those two weakers, uh, is the delta, the slope is going to go increasingly negative. So delta starting at zero, but that's the best it's going to be. Over time, the delta is going to get worse. And if you're going to hedge it off, if you get a runaway move to the upside, uh, it's going to cut into the profit potential. Um, and if you try to hedge it off, it's kind of hard because you don't have a whole lot of delta to lean on necessarily. So, I mean, you can do it. This is, this is totally fine. Uh, I wouldn't have a problem with it. You know, it, it has its own set of issues, but probably the worst case scenario on the upside anyway, uh, this one happens to have uh, a positive upper expiration line, but the worst case scenario is you end up with a, a scratch trade. Now, for me, I just prefer having a bit of positive delta on these, and I'll just manage my delta on the portfolio level. This trade is replacing a very similar trade that I have been doing up until now that I couldn't share because it was a proprietary trade that I, I learned from a course, so just out of respect for, for the teacher. Um, but it's kind of a very similar vibe to that trade there, uh, but there are reasons why I've moved the ratio and, and I prefer it. That other strategy makes money. It's fine. It's just... I felt like it came with too many compromises that for me weren't a good fit for how I want to trade. So I've gone to this and I'm now managing my Delta on a portfolio level as well. So just to talk about that briefly, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole, but this is my account, um, my beta weighted Delta, and this is beta weighted to the SPY. So this is 15 SPY deltas, but that's 1.5 SPX deltas, right? So that one ratio we were throwing on or the two, two by six ratio we were throwing on had like seven, uh, seven deltas in S and P terms. This is like a tiny fraction of even that. So with the strangles, I, I like to manage risk by keeping them relatively small compared to the account size. And obviously with undefined risk trades, you have to check on them frequently and, and manage them, uh, you know, you can't let them get out of control. <laughs> it gets bad, it gets bad fast. But strangles, I keep them really small, it's fine. But with the S&P, I'm doing this more like a campaign trade where I'm putting, you know, a bunch on like over and over again. So you, you build up a substantial aggregate position that they all kind of have risk to the downside in the S&P. Um, so I think if you're gonna do that, you should consider some kind of a, a hedge, at least, you know, what you would call a black swan hedge. Um, and there's a couple of ways you can do that. I don't want to go into that in this video. So maybe I'll do another video to talk about hedging more broadly. But oh, there's this guy, uh, David Sun. He runs a service. He does um, a put selling campaign. Uh, similarly, using, uh, I actually am pretty sure he uses S&P futures. So he's using span margin. Um, and he's doing it like a campaign. So he has the same kind of concerns. And he talks a lot about hedging in what he calls the Trinity system. Right. So part one is his put selling. But then part two and three are different kinds of hedging he does against that. That's a good free place to start to get some ideas about uh, how to go about hedging against uh, down, downside risk, like outsized moves. Like normal down moves are fine. We take the loss. We're not trying to avoid taking losses. That's just a natural part of trading. What we're trying to avoid is you wake up and the market's down like, you know, 10% or something crazy. And uh, you didn't have the opportunity to get out for your planned loss. Now you're looking at many, many times that. So uh, can we hedge against that? How do we budget for hedging against that? That kind of thing. So David talks about it. That's a good place to go. Um, and I will try and put something together to talk about hedging uh, as well. Uh, anyway, that's it. That's the ratio spread. That is my, my new undefined risk S&P trade that I'm doing in place of the old proprietary one. Uh, if, you, if you like the video, hit like. And uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, hit subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one.